Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Charlton Live, sponsored by the British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom Installation. My name is Louis Mendes. I hope you guys are well on your Sunday morning. Uh, on uh, today's show, we'll be looking back at yesterday's 3-2 home win against Carlisle United at the Valley Asiatic. So, uh, secure back-to-back wins for the first time uh, this season. We're only in March, so it hasn't taken too long. Um, joining me to uh, look back at that game, first up, uh, top right, Tom Wallin. How are you doing, Tom? Yeah, I'm all right. First win I've seen since November, I think, maybe. So, yeah, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, it was, well, to be fair, it's the first win for most people since November, obviously, because we've only won away since then. And, yeah, well, again, nice, nice to finally get that that home win, first home win for uh, Nathan Jones as well. Bottom of the screen there uh, is Benji Cloak. How you doing, Ben? I'm all right now. I was really unhappy during the game. <laughs> I don't know if the realisation, as you just said, two wins in two for the first time this season, uh, I wasn't jumping around going, oh, yes, get in there, we score. I was just like, we're making a really bad side here look actually all right, and we're not much better. So, But anyway, let's talk about it. Have some therapy, and maybe I'll feel better at the end. There we go. Excellent. So uh, on today's show, then we'll, we'll hear the goals uh, shortly. Uh, we'll hear from from the Addicts boss, uh, Nathan Jones. Spoke to him uh, after yesterday. He gave us a little bit of um, transfer news as well when we were talking. Um, also, we're going to hear from Alfie May. Um, and, and yes, I did ask him about the tunnel jump, um, which was uh, quite a remarkable uh, effort, uh, tunnel jump, if, we, if, if we're being honest. Um, we've got a couple of guest fans joining us later on in the show as well. Martin Eisted. Uh, and his son Harley are going to join us, and uh, so he can put to bed once and for all that he is not related to to Harry Eisted. Uh, get that scandal over and done with uh, later on in the show. We're going to hear from you guys as well. Uh, morning to Sam, uh, who's in the chat as well as Dudley Ray. Um, yeah, Dudley saying it's a very good morning uh, to everybody because it is. Uh, Ray saying uh, three points in the bag. Just want to highlight that Carney. Uh, was fantastic in the last six. He's been running all day and finishes well. Uh, Ian's in there. Norman's in there. Um, <laughs> Martin's in the chat. All hell let loose. Uh, Shiny Phil Andrew, Paul Davenport. I think Paul Davenport might have won Valley Gold yesterday. It, it, let, me, let us know if that was you, Paul. There was a P Davenport who won like 300 quid. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, let us know what you made of yesterday's game. Uh, the performance, um, the, the three points, the, the tunnel jump, anything you want to talk about. Are we safe now? Are we on the verge of safety? I, I did put that to Nathan. I think we're pretty much there. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, just before we start, I, I just want to send um, our, our condolences to Mads as well. James Madison, uh, I know a lot of you know him, the Trump fan, he goes, goes home and away, sadly lost his father, uh, who, who took him to the ground for the first time in 1996 over, over the weekend. So uh, just to let Mads know that everyone, everyone uh, at, uh, you know, Charlton supporters and, and here at Charlton Live, we're all, we're all thinking of you. Uh, and, and we look forward to seeing you soon when, you, when you're ready to come back. Um, Tom, yesterday's win. Uh, yeah, but uh, Ben did say we, we we made hard work of it, I guess, against a, a Carlisle side who a rock bottom and has obviously lost nine of their last ten league games, and have got Sam Lavelle in defence. So um, yeah, w- 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 how did you see it overall? Yeah, I enjoyed Benji's comments yesterday. He took over my role of hating everything about the club, hating the fans being happy, hating the fact we're winning even though we're rubbish, and uh. I wasn't quite as extreme as Benji yesterday, but it probably was, you know, Reading aside, which you can kind of maybe excuse because Nathan had just come in. That probably was our worst performance under Nathan Jones, I thought. Um, similar to Benji, really. We we made them look quite good. You compare that to, to Portsmouth. I thought the portsmouth Charlton game was quite even, and that's a team right at the top. And now we're playing a team who are stranded at the bottom. And we, you know, at large parts, they, they look pretty comfortable on the ball. Having said that, Eisted didn't have a lot to do in apart from probably should have done better with that that first goal. Um, and obviously we got the win. And when you're not playing well and you're getting wins, you look at where, where we are now and you think if we'd have played like that under Michael Appleton, we certainly wouldn't have won that game. So there was bits of, of Benji's comments that, as I say, I agree with. And I was, I was largely you know, a bit unimpressed by the performance, but we got the win. And to be able to come onto a podcast after a home win, having not had one in November and still say I was a bit disappointed with the performance, shows the the expectations we're starting to set now, as opposed to coming here and just being absolutely delighted with the three points. So, uh, yeah, strange old day, but overall, obviously delighted. Like you say, I think maybe one more just to just to be sure. But the way we're playing and the way we're or the way we're getting results now and the way we're looking, I think we're going to be fine. And really, as I said, when Nathan first came in, that's all we can ask for from him for this season. And now it's about going on and starting to build for next year. So, uh, 
yeah, you can't be you can't be unhappy with a win, even if the performance maybe wasn't as good as we could have hoped for. Mm, excellent stuff. Right, well, let's have a listen back to the goals then from Charlton TV. As always, your commentators were Greg Stubbley and Terry Smith. Charlton's with it. It's a low one. Anderson gets a block on it, but Neil will find it. And get back out to Charters and swings it into the penalty area. It's right across the six-yard box, and it's guided in by Armstrong. Ice did try to get there in the top corner. Can only palm it into the side netting. And the wayside have the lead. A big goal for Carlisle. And it all comes from that decision from Gillespie not to go long or not to go back to the keeper. And in the end, Carlisle got the corner. They pass it short, the near post. It comes back out to Charters. No cross in. And in the end, Armstrong just helps it goalwards. Dobson's tight, but can't get across to block the shot. He had too much on it for Eisted. He couldn't it's keep it out. Melich, and it's good work from Daniel Carnu. Carnu tempted a shot, might come the way of Alfie May. It does. Alfie yeah! May scores! He had to be alert. The way it broke to him was fortunate. But Alfie May. He's clinical with his finish. League One's top goal scorer adds another to his tally. And although Carnu didn't do uh, the prettiest of setups, the hold up play was exceptional from Daniel Carnu. He turned and then tried to hit it himself. Didn't catch it at all well, but the initial challenge and turn was great. The shot deflected off the back of Huntingdon and May pounces like only Alfie May can. Out to the right hand side is Edmund Screen, who's. Starting to venture a little bit further forward. Now May looks for the run of Carnu. It's a wonderful pass. Daniel Carnu, can he finish? He can! Well found by Alfie May, and Daniel Carnu does the rest. Wonderful link up play between Charlton's two strikers. And Charlton take the lead. That's a lovely ball from Alfie May, and a great run from Daniel Carnu. And just for a split second, you thought the opportunity had gone because he wanted to hit it first time and almost got there before the ball. And so he had to adjust his body, and you thought the moment had gone. That lovely pass from Alfie May into the box. That's the first moment, and then the second one absolutely slammed into the roof of the net. And a striker on form scores goals like that. Lurking behind the Carlisle midfielder, but here's Armour. Teasing cross in the penalty here, and Charlton don't know how to deal with it. Comes back towards Diamonds, and the referee's oh. given a penalty. Armstrong fell to the floor as the ball came in the box I think Gillespie may well have blocked him but Charlton didn't know how to deal with the ball in from Armour and when it looked like Diamond was going to release the trigger for the shot the referee gives a penalty instead we didn't get the image until the incident has happened so it's impossible to tell from that angle the referee took an age to give it and Gillespie didn't complain at all, no, which right. suggests that he might have been holding on to Charters to take. Charters, it's a great penalty beyond Harry Eisted. And we're level again. Let's just head up to Edmunds Green, forward to Carnu. Chest control by Carnu. Goes back to Edmunds Green, who sends it up towards Connor Wickham. Little head flick on, looking for Alfie May, who might get on the end of this. It's a defensive blunder, and Alfie May, can he finish? Yes, he can, Alfie May, and Charlton retake the lead. Lovely solo effort from Alfie May after a defensive howler when Connor Wickham flick on tried to find him. And Charlton won't care how it comes. Alfie May gets his second and Charlton's third. Well, May's pointed towards Wickham. I'm not sure he can claim the assist for this run. It's a poor decision from Sam Lavelle. Has to clear his lines. Instead, the ball back to his goalkeeper's weak. And May, with that confidence, is able to finish, but you see the flick here from Wickham causes a bit of nervousness for Lavelle. Mate, confident touch and had the composure just to chest it down. And once he did that, he just had an empty net to fire into. There we go, that's the goals from yesterday's 3-2 home win uh, against Carlisle United. Uh, had to come from, from behind uh, in, in the first half and then uh, were pegged back when, when we had a 2-1 lead in, in the second period. But... Um, yeah, took it, took advantage of a, of a slip in the Carlisle defence from uh, Sam Lavelle um, to, to to score the winner. Ben, uh, give us your overall summary of the game then. So it, during it, you were I mean we have our little WhatsApp group where we chat during games just to just to get a flavour of how everyone's enjoying it. Uh, and and well, you weren't you you were you were really wound up with with le with, with parts of the point, particularly in the first half. I mean, well, how, how did you see it yesterday? 
Oh, it's hard to explain. I just maybe I turned up to the game expecting that we were finally going to get a home win. And because we were playing bottom of the table and we played so well against Derby, against Portsmouth lately, you kind of felt like here it is, we're going to come, we're going to get a full performance. And I that first half an hour was, I mean, it went so quickly and I just thought we were dreadful. Our passing was poor. We isolated Thierry Small, our main outlet, and no one helped support him. Um, and I just thought we made a poor side look all right. And I mean, they weren't even connecting two or three passes together. I mean, as we heard in that goal there, that, that goal came from Gillespie just giving the ball away needlessly. They get a corner and I don't know what that corner was, how they even scored from that. It was like he kind of brushed it off his, off his chest and it just seemed like the desire, the hard work that we done in the last few games just wasn't there um it kind of maybe felt like that we took our foot off the gas maybe we thought ah we will we'll play our game and we'll roll these over or maybe the mindset was i just thought with our formation we're playing five at the back we're playing dobson and coventry that is a game set up for uh playing against a, a better side i think we showed them too much respect um, and, it, and if you watched, Alfie and, and Daniel were getting so annoyed up front that at times Alfie was by the halfway line getting the ball, trying to ping it out and, and get us forward quicker. I think it felt like before, you know, we kept that sideways passing. We just weren't progressive enough. And it was like, what are we waiting for here, guys? We've seen how like dodgy they are at the back and misplaced passes and not much confidence there. Let's go at them. And then when they scored, it just felt like well, that's coming because we're just not on it today. Um, and yeah, I just, I just, yeah, may, maybe for me, it was a bit of perspective now that maybe it was hanging over them that we hadn't won at home for so long. It is great to get the win. Um, but I guess now the more we get safe, the more we'll kind of um, individualise performances and plays and think, is this going to, I know you've said it a few times as well, is this going to be good enough to be mount a title challenge next season? And maybe my mindset was more thinking about that rather than actually being shut up. This is our first home win since November. Let's just be happy and see a tunnel jump and have a few beers and a laugh afterwards. So, yeah, maybe I'm being too um, <laughs> too down about it or I should be happy. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that raises an interesting point about exactly where where we are with this squad and, and at this stage of what will hopefully become the process that, that Nathan takes us through because clearly I don't I don't think this this squad as is would would go and win win a, win promotion or playoffs or anything like that next season but uh, the the change in direction over the last few weeks Tom where we we've, we've gone from a side that probably would have lost that game probably would have buckled at times going behind and and you know maybe, maybe an Alfie May for example who who wouldn't have, have have taken those two chances like we've seen over the last few weeks um it's it's just it's just fascinating to see that I, I think we're sort of in, in a weird middle ground, but the fact that it's gone in the right direction over the last few weeks is is, is positive, and, you, and you've got to take that. And I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed yesterday, even even though it was at, at times, you know, I thought in the first half we were disjointed. Yeah, and you you say this team wouldn't wouldn't go for promotion, but you know we've we've beaten Derby, we've drawn with Bolton, we've we've drawn with Portsmouth, we've we've beaten some of the lower teams. The run that we're on it is is the sort of run that had we not had the Michael Appleton part of this season, we might still have a shout at the the top six. You know, if, if Michael Appleton had even just got, you know, 10 more points, just a, a few wins and a couple of draws towards the end, that would have made a huge difference. So I agree with you to a certain extent, but actually the way that we're playing in the form table since Nathan comes in suggests actually we might do. I think the, the interesting thing about that squad and, and what you raise is, you know, I look at, uh, I was talking to the people sat around me yesterday. You look at Tenai Watson warming up. I was ready for him to be to be sold in January. I just I couldn't see what he offered us. I wanted him nowhere near this side anymore. But he's transformed. You look at Croy Anderson, who came into the season with huge confidence, basically had all of that shot under Appleton. And now you look at the way he's playing. I thought yesterday was a weaker game, but maybe just tired. Same with Carnu. Um, you know, people like Terrell Thomas. You know, they're players that. You know, if you'd asked me three or four months ago, I'd have said no, no chance of them being here next year. And probably they still won't be because probably we are going to push on to another level or maybe they will be backups. 
But actually, Nathan Jones is getting a tune out of players that, you know, I hated a lot of these players not that long ago. I really, really didn't like them. I had no connection to this squad whatsoever. Wanted them all gone. Was properly upset at, at the way this season had gone. Didn't think they cared. And now you've got a manager who's just getting a different tune out of them. And so it shows you the importance of that manager. Whatever Appleton wants to try and say, it shows you the importance of having a manager who can instill confidence, who can give them a kick up the backside when he needs to, who can in, you know, motivate them when he needs to, who can guide them through a game. And that has just been transformative. And it's still early days under Nathan Jones. And when he goes on a bad run at some point, it will be very interesting to see how he adapts to that. Um, because obviously his little quirks and stuff are, are good fun when we're winning, but perhaps not so much when we go the other way. But he is still going to need a rebuild. He is still going to need to get rid of a few players. Um, and, and I do think this squad will look different next year. But actually, what he's managed to get out of this squad in the last seven or eight games has been very, very impressive. Uh, and done the only thing he could do this season, which is keep us safe in League One. Mm, yeah, George says happy uh, to take the win, but the squad still needs an overhaul if, if we want a challenge for next season. Uh, Ian said similar. I'm glad of that performance because it tells you we still have a, a hell of a lot to do to be playoff contenders next year. Uh, the defence is a, is a massive worry. Stuart thought we looked a little bit weary at the end as well, to be understood. I mean, you, you mentioned that. I mean, the, the, the goal, how it came about for the first goal. I think. I mean, Macaulay Gillespie sort of in, inadvertently had, had played a part in both goals really because he gave the ball away for the 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 move that led to the corner for the first one in, in a dangerous position. Um, I think the cross sort of just went just behind him and, and it's Dobson who was trying to mark, I think it was Armstrong, wasn't it? He scored for, for the first goal. And then obviously the second one he gave away the penalty. So there's still there's, there are still elements to iron out. Actually the, the way the way that Nathan speaks about the defending when we hear the interview in a minute, it is very enlightening. Like he he, he knows this. That that's that's promising. Like he can see what the problem is. Um but whether it's personnel or whether it's more more work on, on organization and whatnot and passages of play he he needs to find the way to fix it because that, that has been an improvement of to an extent. But I'd say Tuesday we were a little bit open at Cheltenham. I think we gave up a few chances. And obviously yesterday, you know, we all saw what happened yesterday as well, Ben. Yeah, well, we know that we were conceding a lot of goals from crosses. I remember that Bolton game where we conceded goals from crosses there and it was just seemed quite sloppy. If just the basics, and that's what that's what Nathan's done to this side. We're, we're doing the basics well, we're pressing well as a team, and we're well organised at the back. So that was quite a surprise goal to kind of give away from a cross like that because we hadn't been doing that lately. I mean, if you go back to the goal that Cheltenham scored, that was just a mazy run in the box from their player, and, and he's like, shoots it, I said, and gets a rebound in. So it was a different goal. Um so yeah, like that—that's one thing Nathan's done well. He's brought the best out of these players yeah, defensively. He's looked at that straight away and thought, right, and how can I work on this? And it's just building that structure and shape. Um, Terrell sit sat in the middle yesterday. I was quite surprised to see Jones not playing, to be honest, um, because as, as we said in in these comments here, I think that the team is naturally tired, as Nathan said. Um, after his comments after Cheltenham. It just seems like we're playing so many away games lately and we've been up and down the country um, going up to Fleetwood on Saturday. These players are naturally tired. They're playing games Tuesday, Saturday, especially the likes of Karoy. This is probably the most he's ever played, especially in professional football. So we are going to see these players tire. It's um, It was a poor goal to concede because it just was a nothing, wasn't it? It's kind of skimmed off his chest. Um, and it was a bit sloppy beforehand. So it was one of them where... It was annoying, but it actually made us go forward a bit more and take those risks that we weren't taking before that. But yeah, I think overall in an, in a defensive uh, setup, I think it's better as Tom's always cried out for, just keeping a regular back three, back four, back five, however we want to set us up. And you'll see um, a more organised unit. And we have seen that of late, but um, yeah. And I think the other one, yes, it was a penalty, wasn't it? So you can't think too much about that one um we didn't give up too many other chances other than that mm, yeah um I mean, we'll talk a little bit more about Alfie later on when, when we hear from him um Tom but I mean Carnu's goal was uh, considered I mean as as Stuart points out there's a nice dummy uh, with the ball by Carnu for his first goal I've never, I've never seen that he literally like fully swung at the ball completely missed it and then almost almost in the next step he was levering it into the top corner so even with that that slight that that slight mistake in the build up to the shot. I mean, that was a cracking finish from Dan. And 
he's just remarkable, isn't he? 19 years old. That's, that's 11 goals now for the season, uh, including his four for South End. Um, I mean, uh, a coming of age season. Bear in mind, when, when he was getting the odd game last season, um, we were finding him like, oh, you were thinking, oh, he's not quite ready yet. But th- this season, he clearly has grown into it. And he's only at South End for about four or five games. But what a difference that's made. Yeah, he just looks like a completely different player, doesn't he? And it, he's one of those those youngsters that you sometimes forget is as young as he is. I think Nafe has often talked on this show about the the movement of the younger players, and sometimes you can see that they just their game awareness isn't quite there, or they don't know how to make the right runs. But if you just sit and watch Kanu, every time our midfield get the ball, he is on the move. He's making a run across the back four. He's watching that defensive line. He's making sure he doesn't go offside. And OK, they don't always find him, but the way that he is moving suggests he knows how he wants to play this game. And uh, yeah, yesterday was another perfect example. We talk a lot about resting younger players and, you know, not not, uh, t- you know, relying on them too much. And you look at the likes of Ladapo and now Connor Wickham coming in and you think, OK, is there a chance to take him out of the firing line for a bit? But But why would you when he's in this sort of form? Why would you? Let's just keep him there. You'd imagine if we keep hold of Lieburn and Lieburn's back next year, then there will be more opportunities to rotate between those two and Alfie May, uh, maybe for, for different games, depending on the opposition. Um, but yeah, I've just been thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with him. Um, he deserves his starting berth at the moment. And like you say, he, uh, the goal was maybe slightly fortuitous yesterday and that he tried, it looked to me like he tried the same move twice and eventually got it done. Um, but he did, he got it done. That's the, that's the point. And it was a, uh, sort of an opportunistic goal and he seems to be scoring all types of goals at the moment obviously had that wayward shot that set up the first one but again not afraid to take shots from the edge of the box uh and yeah i just think he he deserves everything he's getting at the moment and, and long may it continue yeah norm says that lethargic start maybe we've seen uh before we'd win with where we thought we'd put uh the win in without the effort but uh we know that's not how it works we've got the win and that's what counts uh, Paul says uh, Nathan's done wonders to get this squad back on track. Mountain, a realistic promotion challenge will be another matter, though. There's a core of a squad, but that's about it. Um, yeah, Joseph says we were better, but not at the best we can be. We did pay too much respect. To, uh, still a few uh, little silly errors. And yeah, Andrew paid credit to Carlisle for coming and uh, outplaying us for 30 minutes. But then they sat back after taking the lead, which is a big mistake and less into the game. I've always felt like when, when you try and sit back, uh, to, to hold on to a lead, Ben. You've got to make sure you've got the centre halves to do it. And um, I, I'm not, I'm not convinced Carlisle do. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm basing that on. Um, Sam said it was uh, the first half was the worst uh, we've had under Jones, but second we looked more dominant. Uh, if we didn't give the penalty, away, uh, it would have been a better scoreline. And Scott points out that the fact we're now talking about next season and a rebuild uh, rather than seven games ago when we felt like we were destined for relegation shows how well that Nathan has galvanised the squad and got us drawing or even winning games. Uh, after playing poorly. Lots of love for Thierry Small in, in the chat. Dean saying he's one of the best left-backs I've seen in a Charlton shirt for ages, even only after a, a few games. Yeah, It's been a very good start. Just, just hope he can keep those levels up. We've seen, we've seen players come in and have good starts and then not keep at it. But yeah, he, he, he looks like he's built for success, doesn't he, Thierry Small? He's got, he's, he's got all that drive, you can see, and he's also been very good on the ball. Um, yeah, let's talk about um, the debut of Connor Wickham, Ben. Um, flick on that led to to Sam Lavelle's mistake for the third goal. I mean, one one of the all time great overhead kicks we've seen at the Valley. Jonathan Johansson uh, take taking notes after that one. I mean, <laughs> overall, what, what did you make of Connor yesterday? I thought he made a massive impact. Yeah, I thought his presence. I thought when the players pinged the ball to him, it stopped dead. He held the ball up well brought others into play and obviously helped uh, make us score that third and all-important goal. Uh, yeah, he did put the pressure on the right player so that that player would make a mistake. And then Alfie was like, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, I think, look, it's it's very tricky. I saw the signing pop up, read the comments, and a lot of fans were like, what? Why do we need him in? Um Because does it stunt the growth of someone like Casey coming in towards the end of the season? Um, and let's see him what he can do. Does it then stop, as Tom was saying, Carnu get more of a run? Do we then take him out? 
Um, or does it heighten the competitiveness of that of that front line? I mean, that's a front line that I am not worried about at all going into next season. I'm excited about it. I mean, Carnu's just going to get better. Alfie May, wow, we've got the top goal scorer in the league. When was the last time we did that? Well, Bradley White Phillips in 20, 2011, 12. Um, so he's so exciting. And when Wickham come on yesterday... May dropped into that 10 roll and he, he looked brilliant. I mean, we know with Alfie, he's just non-stop, isn't he? The effort, the energy he gives, but also the balls he plays. That, balls, that ball to Carney yesterday for the goal. Brilliant ball, forward thinking. And he's just such a nuisance. I mean, to be in that position yesterday and the composure to score that goal, I thought was brilliant because he easily could have just chucked a leg at it straight away, but he waited for it to bounce down and scored it. And I think, yeah, I think all... All like League One clubs kind of do need that presence up front that can kind of, especially with us, with Cardo and May that do the running. If you have someone up there that can hold it up, bring others into play and comes on when they're tired, um, it's brilliant for us. And yeah, we all would love that player to be chucked, but unfortunately it doesn't seem like that's going to happen, does it? Um, I mean, I don't know if any updates about him, uh, but it does seem like to bring him in, and I mean, I don't know if you'll go on to talk about it later, but it seems like we might be looking at another um, free transfer that Nathan mentioned as well. So, look, this is this is good. As the comment come up earlier, we've got a now. Nathan has turned us around so quickly that we're now kind of looking at that mid table and then looking at these performances for next season. And if Wickham can keep um, coming on and becoming a nuisance, then he puts himself in the line to, to be here next season, maybe. Although it does seem to be like the Neil Warnock of players, doesn't he? Like, around this time of the year, oh, go on then, I'll have a club now. And then that's a massive holiday in between. Mm, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the, the only thing about Wickham is, so when when he signed, I got a text from one of my Palace mates saying that, um, as in his mate who supports Palace, um, he says says that his legs, he's, he's like got matchsticks legs. And I was like, oh, so like he's, he's, he can be quite injury prone by the sounds of it. Um, but but Craig says uh, Wickham is a proper Jones signing. He always wants a big man on the bench, and Wickham showed why. And uh, yeah, we'll hear from uh, from Nathan Jones now. Actually, I do ask him about Wickham, as, as Ben mentioned. There, I ask him about the fact that there have been other free agents knocking about. Uh, so I did know that before. It was a bit of a loaded question because I did know that before I asked Nathan. But I thought it'd be interesting to see uh, what he said. Uh, you can you can hear his uh, comment about about Connor Wickham's debut as well, which was really funny. Uh, let's have a listen then to what what Nathan Jones said. Uh, this is following yesterday's three two home win against Carlisle. In the three two win over Carlisle, how did you see it today? Uh, really pleased with so much. Obviously pleased with the result because that's the be all and end all at this stage and where we are and and, and so on. Um, really pleased with so much of the play. Disappointed with with certain aspects of it, especially the goals. I thought we we gifted them two goals. I know a lot of managers would say that, but they didn't have to work hard for the goals. A bit lazy on the second one. First one we it's just a poor not a poor goal to give away. But you know we showed we can score goals. We scored three goals at home. Um, could have scored more with a threat, I thought, all afternoon. Created chances all afternoon um, and and won the game, and I think deservedly so. Yeah, it's the first time trying to have won back-to-back this season and for yourself, a first home win here at the Valley. How did that feel? Yeah, very good. Any wins, uh, I know I take wins anywhere, you know what I mean, and points, and that's what we've had to do. We've had to, by hook, by crook, get as many points as we can and move away from the position we were in, and I think we're in a lot healthier position now than we were sort of eight games ago, and that's that's the main thing. Yeah, I mean that was obviously your, your first target is survival. Do you think you're nearly there now? I oh, look, we don't, we don't look at. It wasn't survival, you know. It, it was, it was sort of getting performances so that we can win and get points, and then picking up as many points as we can. And and however quick, you know, we want to move up the table. We, you know, yes, we want, we want to make sure that we don't don't get sucked into any kind of uh, any kind of relegation thing. But we want to finish as high as we possibly can because we want to build. We're not just planning for now. We want to build for the future as well. And, and they've responded fantastically well. Credit really has to go to the you know, to the players. They've responded fantastically well. The player who's responded really well over the last few weeks is Alfie again. You said on, on Tuesday it's two and three. That's a new stat. Now it's four and four. Absolutely. Well, look, we just had to pull him the other day. And strikers, strikers go through spells. And, you know, he's a clever player and he's, he's a great lad and... Brilliant around the place, thinks about his game, thinks about his movement. You know, he doesn't just go and play off the cuff. He's a, he's a wonderful player to be in. And I just said to him, just relax. Just, you know, things return. Just keep doing the right things. Keep making the same, keep making good runs. And and, and he has. And then suddenly now, you know, he turned the corner. I said to him yesterday, well, now the new stats two and three. Um, uh, uh, and now it's four and four. So it's, it's, 
you know, looks a lot, lot, lot rosy, if you like. You mentioned about the, the goals you conceded. Is that an indication of how it is still a, a work in progress with this side? Absolutely. It will be a work in progress and to, you know, for, for a long, long time because we, we always will strive to be better, but we can't give goals away like that. And it's lazy defending. You know, we, were, we were slow first half. You know, we got caught in possession. We conceded a, a corner. We didn't clear it. Then it's scrappy. And then we got caught wrong side. So they have a little thing, well, I'll, I'll, I'll have a little cheat, I'll pull someone back and hopefully get away with it. That's not how we defend, that's not how you keep clean sheets. And we've got to get out of that mentality because fortunate enough, we've got goals in the team and real talent in the team to get people. But if, if you know, if, if we didn't do that and we missed chances today, then, or didn't score three, then we would have dropped points today. And that would have would have been harsh because we were the better team today. You know, They had a little bits of play where they caused us a little bit of problem in build-up. But then once we sorted that out and got aggressive, we were front-footed. We created lots and lots of opportunities. And, and as I said, I, I, I thought well worth a win. You mentioned you've got talent in the team. You're able to showcase some of your new talent today with, with Connor Wickham joining the club. What can you tell us about what he's going to bring for the rest of the season? Well, hopefully not them bicycle kicks. But... Uh, <laughs> But apart from that, you know, you can see he's a top. We have, well, we, what we've got is pace, energy. We've got real energy in the team and pace and, and running ability and cleverness. What we, we lack a little bit without Chucks is, is a presence where we can go into and, and can get us up the pitch. And he brings that. And uh, said with, with Chucks being a little bit, you know, at, at, at the minute, we, we've got to be careful with him. It, it was just a logical one. And, and I said, Connor's come in, trained really well, fitted in with the group and, uh, and proved that he's, he's worth his, uh, his, his, his contract. Well, could it be seen as almost like an elongated trial ahead of next season for Connor to try and play his way into your plans? Well, of course, we have, we'll have another look. You know, we want, we want, a, I want more balance in the team. As I said, the, the squad will need to, to be trimmed and to be streamlined and we'll need to, to add... Different things. We've got a lot of pace and power in it, and uh, 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 and things. But I'll want to add more balance, and, and and that and that might mean a target man. That might mean wide men. That might mean <coughs> different things in the team. But look, we, we've shown that we can compete. We've shown we're in real good form, and and that. So they they want to play for this club, and that's a great thing. You know, they've got a group of players that have, are taking stuff on board. Yes, we can still get better, but I'm glad we can still get better because it means that you know we're still winning games, but we can get better. So. The future looks bright. You mentioned it yourself there. A lot of fans are trying to work out if there's a correlation between Chucks being injured and, and Connor coming in, but it sounds like the deal's been in the offing for a while. So he's... Well, we had a look at him, but we, we obviously know Chucks' situation and we have to we have to get more out of Chucks, you know, in terms of that. I don't want it to be about Chucks all the time because we're winning games without Chucks and Iki. So it's not about Chucks and Iki. It's about Charlton Athletic and, and about the players we have available. And when people get injured, it gives other people opportunity. And we've got strikers that are flying you know Daniel Connor's 19 years of age and flying he's, he's, he's banging them in Alfie May's back to his best 20 goals now so we've got the leading scorer I think in the league in, you know so let, let's not make it about one person we're, we're bringing people in and we're, we're developing a, a, a way of playing a system of playing and, and, and everyone's giving me absolutely everything yes we can get better we should have defended better today because I would have I'd loved a clean sheet and to score three that would have been utopia for us today but look we won the game and climbing that league and we got 44 points well as a, a don't know what we had when I came in, whether it was 30 or something like that. So we're around about that figure. So, you know, it shows we're, we're in decent form and I'm very happy with that. And uh, would you be looking at any other free agents? Uh, we will. We might have an, uh, uh, an announcement. We're just waiting for clearance. But, yeah, we've got uh, an exciting one coming up. So it's, uh, yeah, I have someone I know very, very well and we'll, we'll, we should have more news for you next, year, next week. Thinking about a new kitchen or bathroom? Find professional, independent local installers with free home surveys, itemised quotes and protected payments, trading standards approved contracts and workmanship warranties. The British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom, Bathroom Installations accredits installers to ensure they are police checked, fully insured and experienced. Take the risk out of home improvement. Visit bikbbi.org.uk Hello fellow addicts, I'm so excited to tell you all about our micropub, The River Owl House. The River Owl House is based in East Greenwich, it has six pub of the year awards, an ever-changing selection of amazing beer. It's owned by Charlton fans, walkable to the ground in just 20 minutes with buses that go direct to the Valley too. If your match day routine includes a drink with your friends, you must join your fellow addicts in the river. See you soon. Right, welcome back to Charlton Live. Just before the break there, we heard from the Addicts uh, manager, uh, Nathan Jones. In a minute, we'll hear from uh, the goal scorer, top goal scorer in the division, Alfie May. And then we've got our guest fans, Martin 
and Harley Ice to join in us uh, later on uh, in the show. But yeah, so on on what Nathan had to say, first of all, so let, let's talk about those three agents, Tom. So um, Kazenga Luwalua has been training with us. Um, and Tariq Fosu is a name that came up yesterday more than once. Um, but I mean, judging by what Nathan said and, and the fact it's someone he knows very well. So Tariq was at Stoke after Nathan was there, whereas obviously Luai Luai was at Brighton and at Luton with, with Jones. So it certainly seems much more likely it's going to be him. Um, 33, obviously, I mean, he, I used to hate playing against him when, when he was at Brighton and particularly he used, he used to really struggle against him. So, I mean... I trust Nathan basically based on what he's brought in so far. I've got a lot of trust in what Nathan in, in what Nathan wants to do. Yeah, and the players that he's worked with before that he's now working with again seem to be seem to be playing well. Eisted obviously had a couple of mistakes in recent games, but largely has been very good. And I know there's a few others across this squad as well. Uh, like you say, he's 33. I, I can't imagine it's going to be a long term solution for us, but you look at the hole that Corey has left since he's since he's gone, if we if if he looks good for the rest of this season, then maybe he is worth a punt next year, or maybe a player like that, when they're on form, can be the difference between going up and and not. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's a it, it's a bit of a free hit, isn't it? Like you say, I, I trust Nathan way more than I trust uh, Scott and the recruitment that that had been made prior to Nathan coming in. Um, so it'll be interesting, maybe a bigger topic to see what happens with that over the summer, but. Everything Nathan seems to be doing at the moment is is turning certainly to silver, maybe not quite gold at this stage, but certainly massive improvements everywhere. So, yeah, I, I, as I say, I don't think it's a long term solution. But going back to Benji's point around Connor Wickham and whether that restricts youth players, I don't know how many sort of tricky wingers we've got really that that he would be restricting. So, bringing somebody in with that experience who's played at a higher level and, as you say, caused us problems in the past just to get us through this season, you know, if he does look good and he, he does work well with the strikers we've got, then we can maybe give him a, a one-year deal and, and kick on next year as well. So, yeah, I, I think it's worth a try, worth a go, and, and Nath knows him and trusts him. Yeah, I mean, other than Tyrese Campbell, have we actually got any wingers <laughs> at the moment after we sold Corey? I don't think we have. Like, certainly not first team. Uh, and obviously, we, Tyrese's form fell off a cliff really unfortunately ben and so i like that that feels like a a position we want to look at whether, whether it turns turns out to be Luai Luai, whether it turns out to be um fossu obviously who, who we know well um from from his time here previously oh mate yeah for me that's this it's the biggest area of our squad that we need and i, I go back earlier to say and play in that formation against such a like the bottom of the league i think actually thinking about it, we, we haven't really got many other formations to play because, as you said, Tyrese's form is pretty poor. His confidence seems very low. So you're not going to then switch it up to have two wingers playing because, naturally, you've only got one in Thierry Small and he's really a left-back. So, yeah, that's a massive position we need. If it is Kazen Kazengo Luwalawa or Tariq Fosu, I mean, he was brilliant with us in his time here. Um, then it's great because that's the position we need going forward. It does make me laugh how he's like, yeah, I need to trim the squad, but yeah, we've got another player coming in. But if it's a player in that position, then that's ideal for us um, because we uh, we saw Henry Ryler come through, didn't we, and have like a few glimpses of what he could do. Um, and again, if it's someone like that who's 33, who's had a good career, as you said, who's, who's uh, come down to the Valley and given us hell before, um, I'm, is he... Is he? Um, do you remember him doing those backflips as well? Or am that I was, thinking of? Or was that his Lamana? brother? Yeah. Or yeah. did they did they both do him? Who knows? Maybe we'll find out. I don't That's, know if you can still do that in your mid thirties. I certainly. Yeah, his brother-in-law. Did you see that? Yeah, as well. That. Yeah, there's yeah, so lot, lots of uh, surprising links. So yeah, maybe he'll be backflipping his way into in, into into the valley very soon. <laughs> um, uh, I think we should hear from Alfie May next. There's, there's a good question from Paul, but I want to save that for when Martin comes on because uh, just put him on the spot about his not not real son uh, and the goalkeeper situation. But yeah, let, let's have a listen then to Alfie May. Um, so I'm sure you've all seen it by now, but the tunnel jump yesterday was just up there with <laughs> for one, one for the ages. <laughs> and it's the first time we've done one since um, since obviously November. Uh, and clearly, we need a little bit more, um, more, more practice because, to, uh, to put it kindly, Alfie went arse over tit, didn't he, and uh, and, and fell over. But luckily, luckily uh, I think he saw the funny side. This is uh, me talking to Alfie uh, after yesterday's win against Carlisle. Alfie, um, everyone wants to know if you're all right after falling over doing the tunnel jump. I've had a lot of messages saying <laughs> am I injured? 
<laughs> nah, to be fair, I uh, I landed it quite, I landed it quite well. Um, <laughs> but it's just like it's, it's fun to laugh at, isn't it? Yeah. So I guess you've been out of practice because we haven't won at home for a while. But it's it's nice to get that over the line today. Uh, yeah, listen, the three points were, was important. Um, we're still unbeaten, I think, in seven now, and we're on a we're on a good run and back to back wins as well. Um, yeah, we just want to keep going and see where it takes us. Obviously, you're on a personal good run again. And we saw your interview on Tuesday, how much I guess you've been hurting over the last few weeks. So what does it mean today to get a brace? Yeah, it's nice. As a, Like I say, as a striker, you, you kick yourself when you ain't scoring. You feel like you're not doing it for the team and things like that. I, I got brought into this club to, to score goals. And listen, I know I scored goals at the start of the season. When you go on a little bit of a goal drought, you start you start doubting yourself. And to be fair to the gaffer, he's, he's, he's had a few chats with me and said you know where the net is like don't don't be frustrated it'll come and I think I'm in four and four now so um now I'm back on a run so hopefully I can I can really kick on with the the next eight games and and see where it can take me as as listen I want to win the golden boot and that's that's what I'm aiming for and and like I say see where we as a team can finish yeah you mentioned at times this season you feel like over your career you've scored almost in in streaks and so you're always confident that you once you got one you're, you're going to pick it up again yeah, definitely. Uh, that's what I, I, I go on streaks, and then, like I say, yeah, miss probably five or six games where I don't score. And but I'm I'm doing it for a bigger club now. <laughs> so there's probably a little bit more pressure on me. Um, but I thrive off that. It's when you have when you have your doubters, you you sort of you you look at it and put put it in the back of your head and and make sure you prove people wrong. And that's what I've been sort of doing my whole career. Well, certainly the last few years, I think this is the first season where you've hit 20 goals in, in League One as well. That's a remarkable achievement. Yeah, yeah. I want to like I say, I think the last couple of years I've, I've hit, hit, hit 20 league goals and I want to carry on. Um, like I say, I want to see where it can take me. If that's 30 league goals, that'd be, that'd be the, 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 the next achievement. You've mentioned the, the golden boot there for League One. Is that, is that something you keep a keen eye on then? Yeah, definitely. When you when you're in and around it with this late on, um, it's definitely it's a it's a great personal goal. Um, it's a good achievement. Uh, I, I think I finished joint second and third over the last couple of seasons, and I want it. I want it. So I, I, I'll be I'll be trying my hardest to to, to keep keep scoring. You already beat Haaland at the end of last last year for that that one in the calendar year as well. So those little competitions <laughs> in your mind sort of keep you going. Yeah, definitely. You, you you keep working hard every day on the training pitch, and you you try and you try and be better every day, and and that's what I want to be. I still I still want to like I say I still want to score goals, and it's to have little achievements like that. I set my I set my own targets at the start of the year. Um, completed one today with getting twenty league goals. Um, so yeah, it's time to kick on. You mentioned Nathan there. What difference has he brought to the the side as a whole? Yeah, I said it before. He brings the the energy that he brings, and uh, the way that we're playing, he, everybody's bought into it. And there's the, the, on training, you sort of you sort of see the, the the structure that he sets out, and it's been really good. Um, we're unbeaten, and like I say, we want to just set it in there. Let's let's see where we can actually finish. Let's just have it a right good go. Yeah, obviously Connor's been bought in as well. Connor Wickham on a, on a short-term contract, so it's a striker with a, a lot of experience to play alongside. Now, what do you sort of hope to, to learn from him? Yeah, definitely. He can he, he's played at the top level, um, and then like today, I see him coming on. I, I knew exactly what I was doing in terms of when it goes up to him. I'm just going to run off him because you knew that he had, at one point I think he had two defenders on his back, um, and then that's what that's what he brings to the team. Now he's gonna he's gonna be needed. And when we go long into him, it's it's about getting runners off him and 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 trying to score. Well, see, you mentioned your personal targets for the rest of the season, but as a team, I think Charlton are pretty much they're not quite in, in terms of staying up. But what else do you, do you hope to achieve between now and the end of the year? Playoffs. <laughs> Is that achievable? Um, no, no, listen, we as like I say, we wanna we wanna finish as high as we possibly can. Um, we know it's not been a great start when the, the, at the start of the season and. The fans probably really frustrated, um, but I'm hoping that they can see something now as, as as what we're sort of doing and what we're trying to achieve as a team. Imagine if Alfie was being genuine when he thought we, we could get to the playoffs and I just laughed in his face there. <laughs> but yeah, that was Alfie May after after yesterday's game and uh, failed uh, tunnel jump attempt. Um, Tom, it is remarkable this season and and 
to, to bounce back from the last few weeks and you, you could hear how you know he said a little bit on Tuesday with Tell as well about how he feel he'd, he'd let the side down but one, one thing you could always say is he's, he's always put put the hard yards in and and therefore you knew probably once what once, once things started falling back into place he, he'd pick up where he left off it just took a little bit a little bit longer than he would have hoped yeah and even somebody of his quality is going to have his his down days or his little little drops in form but uh, yeah, you look at him yesterday, not only the two goals, the first one's so opportunistic in terms of just, you know, being alert, being on the edge, watching that deflection. Great first touch to move away from that defender and slam it home. And then the second one, you know, opportunistic as well. And I watched back the highlights today uh, and it seemed quite comfortable on the highlights. But when I was stood behind that goal yesterday, it seemed to take him forever to put it in. And I was convinced he was going to miss. But uh yeah, he's just been brilliant. And the, the work ethic outside of that, we know what he's about. He's just been a complete breath of fresh air. As Benji says, really, the first kind of complete striker like that we've had since, probably since Bradley Wright Phillips. And, you know, he's only 30, 31. He's got a few years left. Um, I think this is the highest level he's played, uh, certainly uh, consistently like this. And, yeah, he had to deal with a little spell, didn't he, under Nathan Jones, where he was being subbed off first. I can't remember exactly where that was away when we I was there. But, um yeah, and then dropped a couple of times as well. Um, but, you know, he's not worried about that. He's put his head down. He's worked hard uh, and fully justified his place back in the side. And again, nobody's bigger than the club. If we've got enough strikers that we can rotate for different situations and we're the sort of club that can rest Alfie May next year, then then that shows how how good strength and depth we're, we're going to have. So, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely delighted for him. I do hope he gets the golden boot. It will be a little glimmer of positivity in what's largely been a, an appalling season from us and uh yeah he thoroughly deserves it and he just seems like a genuinely lovely bloke obviously you've met him I haven't yet but maybe will at player of the year but he just seems like a, a very very decent bloke as well and yeah I'm just delighted for him and I'm, I'm very delighted that we've got him as as our player as well yeah char- yeah character wise he's definitely a, a Cholton player if that if that makes sense the sort the sort of bloke we like to have around but hard work and um, shiny field says uh, at the Bristol Rovers home match in August uh, some turd near me shouted, Alfie May will never get 20 goals in a season for us. He's not the answer. He's rubbish. Humble pie, anyone. I mean, so, some of the comments you saw on social media over the last six weeks, I was sitting there thinking, you, you guys mad? Like, there are people re- ready to write him off because he's had a few weeks out. I mean, like, uh, he was always going to he was always gonna come back and score goals. Like it was at the start of the season when he went three or four without getting one. He was always going to get goals in this side. That's just the player he is. Dean said he still fear uh, that Alfie might go in the summer, but hopefully... Uh, it won't come to that. Right, let's bring in our guest fans. I'll be, I'll be looking forward to this one uh, all day. Um, so let's welcome onto the onto the screen the man who claims he's definitely not related to Harry Eisted. Uh, is Martin Eisted, and he's actually put it in his bio there as well. Uh, Martin <laughs> joins us and his uh, and his son Harley. Uh, hi, chaps. How how are you two doing? Yeah, Martin, all good. Yep. Good to good to have you guys on 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 the show. So. Martin, have you have you got a birth certificate or anything that, that can prove that, that well that you're not related to Harry? It's, it's quite hard to prove you're not related to someone, but um, yeah, tell it tell us straight. He's not one of our clan, no. <laughs> it's not like we're taking him under our wing. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, you can you can answer the question then that the glove part put in. So n- normally we just talk about yesterday's game. Let's go straight for it then. Uh, talking the next season, would, would would we be comfortable with Eisted or or Ashley Maynard Brewer being our, our our number one? Martin first. Um, how have you rated the two goalkeepers this season? Oh, pressure. Um, I would go with Eisted. I would go with Harry. Um, but the last three games, he just looks so nervous after his uh, Aaron Ramsdale moment. It's just not been the same. So, but he's got more experience. So. He wins yeah. for me. Yeah. And, and, and Harley, I mean, do, do you think between them that either of them would be good enough for for the number one spot in a side that we think should be challenging for promotion? Um, yeah, I wouldn't change anything going into next season. Um, we've seen, uh, I said, can do it. He did it at Barnsley. They all love him up there. So, and they got they got to the playoff final with him. So, yeah, for me, he would work for next season. Uh, I'm absolutely gutted that Harley isn't uh, Harry just with like a fake moustache on or something because I, I was convinced that's what you're gonna that's what you're gonna do. But um, maybe just on, on yesterday's game, I said a little bit earlier in the show I thought it was probably our, our weakest performance under Nathan Jones, but probably still ten times better than it was ever under 
under Appleton, what have you both made of, of Jones so far and how confident are you that going into next season he can uh, he can kick on and take us to that next level? Yeah, I really think he's the man. He's got the passion, he's got the, the, the fans, he's got the players. But I think yesterday we all turned up thinking this is a nice 6-0, just struggling the park. And it never happens, does it? It never happens. Maybe they're tired because he's pushing them harder than they've been all season. But they are professionals, so they should be able to cope with it. But, yeah, I think Anderson probably needs a rest. Mm. Needs to come out just as a, as a break. But I can only see it onwards and upwards, really. Well, what about you, Harley, as well? Uh, I would agree. It's just, yeah, as, as I'd say, the passion. Um, it's the first manager since Bo that's not going to row, but on the side. It actually, it actually cares about the club. So, yeah. For me, it's very good to see him right now. Good morning, chaps. Um, I was thinking the other day that now these new signings have settled in a bit more, that January was actually quite a positive window because I've kind of felt like now they've settled in, that they they're doing quite well. Um, how do you how do you think those signings have been? And um, is there any that you're thinking for next season that they're, they're definitely going to be in our squad going forward? I think the January signing is very positive. And it's, it's, yes, we're all knocking those upstairs that we don't know about, but it clearly must be a plan to, to put some money in and move on. We can't keep going backwards. All positive signings, as I can see, mixed with the academy, which is just just brilliant. And then Steve Avery, a little note, Steve Avery used to be my sports teacher picked me for the one game in the B team, slipped over, own goal, football career over. So uh, <laughs> I'm glad he's moved to Charlton and not my school team. I was say, it runs in the family, that does, doesn't it? Um, oh, no, he's not your son, is he? Um, um, ha, ha, uh, Harley, ha, ha, uh, your views on, on Ben's question as well. I mean, uh, do, do, do you think the signings in January, I, I wonder if the fact that Nathan has improved everyone has helped all of them as well, because obviously it was a slow start for quite a few of them. Yeah, so it's been a mix. I, I would disagree. I would say there's some, a couple that, that that maybe were a bit panicked, like Backington. I know he's out of contract at the end of the season. I, personally, I wouldn't bring him in. I know there were some talks of um, making that a permanent in the summer, but for me, that's not one. But again, some stand out, like Small, he's just been brilliant. So yeah, well, it has been, it's been nice to see a, a January where they've actually put some money in behind. Um, still positive but still some some doubts yeah i mean so how, how much work um starting with you martin first do, do you think there needs to be between now and sort of the start of next season in terms of revamping the squad is, is do you think there's still a bit of a way to go yeah i think the way that nathan has now seemed to stuck to the core not bringing in louis watson and all that, that we all thought was it and just clearly isn't so there is those that are on the outskirts will disappear, I believe, and he will stick with his core that he, he's got these last however many games to, to cement who's staying, who's going, and it's got to be positive from there. It'd be hard on some, but it's the way it is. Yeah, and, and same to you, Harley, and also, I guess, is there a specific area of the squad that you think will have to improve between between now and next season if we are to be serious like promotion contenders next year? Um, yeah, I still think the uh, up front, I think we're sort of going into next year. Um, in the middle with Dobson obviously leaving, that's a big hole to fill. Hopefully Connor can do it, um, but they seem to be all right playing alongside each other. So I don't know how Connor will be on his own. Um, and then defensively as well, we, of course, we're still, I know we brought in a lot, but they're still sloppy at the back. So yeah, that could definitely do with some, some additions. It's that creative is what we're crying out for. Yeah, certainly. Well, I wonder if they're going to try and address that a little bit with the wingers and, and obviously in, in the middle of the park as well. I guess Coventry's starting to, to bring that sort of stuff. But anyway, right, you guys, uh, Martin and uh, Harley, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Harry, of course, for holding the camera just behind you guys so you couldn't be seen on it. But yeah, great to have you guys on as our guest fans this week. Uh, and I'm sure we'll see you guys about. Cheers. There we go. That's Martin and Harley Eisted, who are not related to Harry Eisted apparently, um, on uh, on this week's uh, Charlton Live as, as our guest fans. I mean, uh, just looking uh, looking forward then, Tom, so 
I, I said it to Nathan there. Obviously, he the way the way he answers certain questions is always very interesting. I said, oh, yeah, obviously, survival is your first aim. It's like, oh, don't even think about that. It's just about winning points and, and winning games. But we're, we're effectively there now, I reckon, just because of the gap and, and what you'd expect to happen in, in the final eight games for us, I'd expect to pick up the four points we probably need. So we'll, we'll be fine. I think um, they'll come back to bite me if we aren't. So, what what is what is serious for next for the rest of this season? Now, what what is a serious aim that that we can achieve between now and the end of the campaign? Yeah, I think as far as he's concerned, the the aim is win every single game. That it's as simple as that. Wherever that means we finish, I don't think it's going to be the playoffs as uh, as Alfie was hoping. But it's obviously then not going to be relegation if we do it. And for Nathan, of course, he can't just say we're safe because, one, technically, mathematically, we're not. But two, if they get complacent and if we go on a little bit of a, a downward dip in, in the, the remaining seven or eight games, then that's not going to look great either. So I know we've had seasons like the one we had under Adkins springs to mind where you end on a positive and it's like, here we go, we're going to kick on next year and then it doesn't happen. So I'm not going to read as much into that as perhaps I'd like to. But if we do go and win every game, you know, the positivity that will start to develop around this club going into the summer, as I say, compared to where we were just six or seven weeks ago, will be will be huge. So, you know, I think we already know him well enough to know he's not the sort of manager that's going to sit on his laurels and say, you know, this is job done now. He's just going to want to win every single game. Uh, and if we do... Obviously, that will probably put us top of the form table for the time he's been here. And that that is impressive from him. Um, and, and yeah, really, that that's all he's been left with this season. There was nothing else he could achieve. Keep us safe. I said that on day one. If he does that, that's all he can do. Um, now that he's probably done that, let's just see how many games we can win. It's probably not going to count for very much. But uh, for him, that will be huge. And he can then start to go into the summer. Positive mindset, sign some players and go from there. So, uh yeah, there's not much more than that, really. Mm, yeah, Scott says uh, Nathan Jones' mentality is neg- neg- never negative. He's ingrained that into the whole squad. Uh, and he says top 10 is now a goal, I would uh, say. I, I still think that would be quite a big ask. You'd, you'd have to win the vast majority of the rest of your games to, to, to get close to that, I think. But, um, yeah, there's um, Sam saying I can see us winning six out of the eight and the others being draws. And Nathan won't settle, as you well know. He could, uh, we could pick up and, and slot into the playoffs if other results happen. We can't slot into the playoffs, Sam. I'm really, so- I'm really sorry to be the the bearer of bad news. But even if we won all of our remaining games, we wouldn't get the playoffs. I, I think we'd we'd still fall short. Um, so yeah, that that that's a sh- that's that's a shame. Um, Philip saying bring back Sean Clare and Sessie Young. Uh, some spectacular goals, at least for defenders. They 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 can shoot. I mean. When Sam Lavelle was here, there were a lot of fans who actually quite liked him, and um, some seemed a little bit upset when he left. I think I don't think I'm imagining that, and I, I don't know if, if like can people not see certain things because there are players like. But for me, it's like even like the likes of Sean and and, and to an extent Cess. I mean, the, we have been we've been mid table League One for too long because of players like that. So I, I, I see no reason to bring them back, especially when Thierry Small currently is is looking looking like a, a massive upgrade anyway right we've run out of time uh on channel i've just seen the uh the, the time's ticking over to 11 o'clock so yeah thanks to everyone who's uh, joined us uh in the live chat for this week's show on youtube hope you guys uh, enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel uh, so you never miss another Charlton live show uh, you can subscribe to uh, our podcast as well wherever you hear the pod um again to make sure you, you always pick them up when they're downloaded after the event massive thanks to, to martin and hardy eisted uh, who joined us as this week's uh, guest fans. Big thanks to Tom and Ben as well. Great to speak to the pair of you. Cheers, lads. Cheers, guys. I've cheered up now, so it's good therapy. Uh, excellent stuff. There we go. Right, um, this has been Charlton Live, sponsored by the British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom Installation. We'll be back on Thursday to look ahead to the trip up to Fleetwood. Oh, God, it's a long one next week. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see you again uh, on Thursday. <laughs>